Welcome back, everyone, to a brand new spoiler review here at Max Talks Movies. My name is Max Dinenberg. Today, I'm breaking down episode four of Agatha All Along. The episode's titled, If I Can Reach You, Let My Song Teach You. We're going to break down this episode, break down my thoughts. So if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscriber button and ring that bell for notifications. I do movie and TV show reviews, out of theater reactions, a box office show every single Tuesday, and movie franchise rankings. So if you like any one of those things, please subscribe, ring the bell. I am here every single Thursday giving you reviews on Agatha all along. Also, please comment down below. What are your thoughts on this episode? Is this your favorite, least favorite? Are you off the boat on the show? Are you one of those people who are waiting for all nine episodes to drop for you to then uh, watch the show? And also, please like the video, the thumbs up button down below. It's how you support this channel. It helps out the YouTube algorithm. So, if you know, I have felt kind of middle of the road with, uh, I'm not trying to make a pun there, no pun intended, um, middle of the road show for me. This is not, this is far from anything worse. Uh, this is not one of the worst MCU shows, but it's not one of the best MCU shows. Now, with saying that, I still have that same sentiment after episode four, but this was by far and away for me, my favorite episode of the series so far. Now, um, was this great television? No, but I think we've had mediocre to okay television in the first three episodes. I thought this was good TV. Um, again, not great, but good. Um, what really helped this episode was Aubrey Plaza, who I've already been talking about a lot on this channel because I reviewed Megalopolis and My Old Ass in all the last week. But she was in the first episode she, a little bit, not a lot. And then she was not, not in episodes two and three. And I just felt like with Agatha and Teen, it just didn't feel like we were balanced with interesting characters because, and I still feel this way, I don't think the rest of the coven are that interesting to me. They're very on the nose in one note. And I'll get to that as an issue in a second. But I think we've evened things out of characters because luckily Rio Verdal uh, at Play by Plaza is in the entire episode and she is marvelous. She is easily the standout of the episode she steals all of the scenes and she obviously continues to have that uh, dry sense of humor which has gotten her this really career over the last 15 years that i've really enjoyed um one of my favorite comedic actresses and her and Catherine Hahn do have really strong chemistry together on the show which helps but the humor and the energy of Aubrey plaza fits the show extremely well to a point where she, for me, feels like the per the, uh, the one standout actor that knows exactly what show that she is on. She knows to throw in the seriousness. She knows to throw in the humor when it's the right time. Her outfits were ma magnificent in the episode. Her, again, what she's really strong at, always has been since Parks and Rec, are the knowing where the camera is and using your face when the camera's on you. And she gives some great facial reactions in the episode. So that alone and her entertainment value made this episode a lot more enjoyable for me than the first three episodes. And even in the first episode when she's in it, she's pretty dead serious. She's just in the Mayor of Easttown part and then the very end, which I thought was kind of a, a cheaply made scene with her and Agatha's like first fight uh, towards the end of episode one. So I really appreciated that um, she was in the episode doing her obby positive things, but there's a lot of layers into her character, so I'm very excited. So they're continuing this idea that basically each week will be an escape room on the on the witch's road. And this week was all about, uh, after last week um, was the wine, and we had to figure out Jennifer's, you know, how to, he had to save everyone basically in that episode. This week it is all about um, Alice, as uh, every time she's talking, it feels like it is about her mother, which I, is an issue. But this episode is the fact that she and the coven basically have to sing this uh, witch, uh, the, the version of the song that her mom played uh, that made it really popular. And it was actually a protection spell on this curse that is on uh, Alice. And um, the story behind that, I think, is really strong. The problem is that's kind of the only thing going for Alice's character whatsoever, just her dead mother. I wish she had other character beats or elements or traits other than just over and over again, just talking about her mom. It just feels kind of rinse and repeat. 
Um, but we get this huge um, song sequence with everyone. I, th I think the song's actually good, but I think this episode did the song for a little bit too long. I think you didn't really feel that in the in the second episode because they were going back and forth between the witches singing the song to Teen being scared off by the, the seven witches. Um or the Salem Seven, yeah, the Salem Seven. So it kind of felt more intense and felt like it was building to something. This was just kind of a song to be a song in the episode. So I wish that the song was good. It just felt like it went on for a, a very long time. But again, Aubrey Plaza stealing the scene as just playing the drums, not being afraid of this curse, which I think is going to be interesting moving forward. Um, obviously it seems like Agatha clearly thinks that some way teen is her son because there's a reason in her opinion, why she can't know who he is. You can tell she really cares for him. And especially when he gets hit by the, the glass in his chest, she's like really emotional acting like a mother in the scene. Jennifer saves him. And, uh, obviously she has that back and forth with teen, but then once teen brings up, uh, her son, she just kind of leaves the conversation. So they go to this campfire. That's when, uh, they keep talking about their scars and clearly, uh, the insinuation for Rio, uh, is that her scar is Agatha, her lover from years, uh, past. Um, and I think this is all going to tie into the dark hold and the sacrifice of Nicholas scratch. And more importantly, probably Mephisto towards the end of the season, um, but we have this one-on-one -on -one kind of trying romantic like scene with Agatha and Rio, but it ends with Rio basically telling Agatha that is not your son. So I still think there's a really strong chance that maybe the whole, maybe the person as a whole is not, uh, Nicholas Scratch, like teen himself is not Nicholas Scratch, but there's a really strong chance that part of his body or his body is being possessed by Nicholas Scratch, um, her son. So um, for me, this was a really, a really solid episode. This is the type of show that I wanted. I wasn't expecting top tier MCU, but I wish in the first episodes, it wasn't just kind of mediocre, kind of forgettable television. For me, this worked. And I might be in minority on this. I thoroughly enjoyed this episode. It was my favorite episode of the series so far. So it gets me more excited. As I said, the the other so Rio, Teen, and Agatha are all very interesting characters. Clearly, for me, the three strongest actors giving the three strongest performances on the show. Obviously, Patty Labelle is a legend. Was well, probably not Patty Labelle. Patty Lapone is obviously a legend, but the three other witches just feel extremely one note. And even though they're kind of giving backstory, as I said. The only interesting one right now for me is Lilia, who keeps like snapping in and out of things. That character, I think, could have some interest, interest. But even after the whole house scene, they're all telling stories. Alice tells another story about the mom. I just feel like there's something else in her life that she could talk about other than her mom. So that's kind of annoying. And uh, Jennifer just keeps doing her potions things. There's nothing interesting at the moment with her character. So right now, there's three interesting characters, three not so. I wish we were maybe at the end of the season. I care about all the characters. Right now, I really only care about half the characters. So that's my thoughts on episode four of Agatha All Along. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section. Like the video, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll see you guys soon.